1977. Today we're going to look at the rise of Wolseley during the reign of Henry VIII. Wolsey's rise to power was remarkable as he had not been born a noble. He had in fact been born the son of a butcher and a cattle dealer in 1471 in Ipswich. At this time, England was divided into different classes and very few people managed to climb out of their social class. However, Wolsey and later Thomas Cromwell were two men who managed to achieve this. Fortunately, Thomas Wolsey was incredibly intelligent and either his dad or his uncle, who is a wealthy merchant, paid for Thomas to be educated at Oxford University so that by the age of 15 he had gained his degree in theology. At university he learned how to deal with men and their motives which came in useful when he became a member of the King's cult and then Henry VIII's chief advisor. Thomas quickly became a prominent figure within the church environment. He remained at Oxford University and in 1498 he became Dean of Divinity at Magdalen College. A career in the church was a good way for a clever man to get on in life if they didn't have a noble background. He then gained a job as the college's treasurer in Oxford. Perhaps this experience helped him in the future when he dealt with finances for Henry. The gaining of this position was really important as it helped him to undertake a huge college rebuilding programme. Whilst doing this job, he showed great ambition and determination, which later became his trademark. The skills he gained from these roles and his work ethic as a result were to become invaluable later. He also started to become a little arrogant, which was later to annoy nobles of much higher birth. Around 1501, Wolsey became chaplain to Henry Dean, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Through this position, he quickly got to know other important men through networking. One of these men was Sir Richard Nanfan, who was the governor of Calais. In 1503, Wolsey joined the household of Richard Nanfan. This was incredibly important as he was the deputy lieutenant of Calais. As a result of this, Wolsey gained experience of being in France, making sure they had enough supplies and experience of Calais and what it was like. This was to prove crucial when he was later to organise the French campaign for Henry VIII. It was also crucial as it was due to his position within Nanfan's household that he came into contact with Henry VII. Richard Nanfan introduced Wolsey to the king who then gave him a position at court later on. Without this introduction, maybe Wolsey would never have come to the attention of Henry VIII. In 1507, Wolsey was made royal chaplain to Henry VII, which meant that he was not only at court, but he also had personal access to the king. Here he became one of the secretaries for the Lord Privy Seal, Richard Fox. In this position, he was able to showcase his talents, undertaking diplomatic missions abroad, where he undertook negotiations. This he did very successfully and showcased the skills he had learned as well as his capacity for hard work, organisation and determination. As a direct result, he was asked to undertake the diplomatic talks with Scotland. So in 1508, he was sent on a mission to secure an alliance between King James IV, Henry's brother-in-law, through his marriage to his sister Margaret and England. He then went on to Mechelen to discuss the marriage of Henry VII and Marjorie in order to help control the Low Countries. As a result of these, Wolsey was made the Dean of Lincoln just before Henry VII died. Wolsey also had to thank his former pupil, the Marquis of Dorset, for his rise to power, for the Marquis of Dorset also introduced Wolsey to the new king. A key turning point, however, in his rise to power came in 1509 when Henry VII died and the young, 17-year-old Henry VIII became king. In that year, he was promoted to the Royal Almoner, which meant that he was in charge of giving charity to the poor. It also meant that he was appointed to the Royal Council. This was crucial as it allowed Wolsey to have direct access to Henry in, set in a setting where he could offer the new and inexperienced king advice. This allowed him to build up a personal relationship with the king using his charm, wit, hard work and gift of flattery. 
This is a case of how his personality and hard work allowed him to build up positions which then offered the chance to network until he came to the attention of Henry VIII. Upon building up that personal relationship, he continued to use his personality and people skills to accumulate positions of power. Wolsey's big break came in 1512. Henry, against the wishes of many of his father's advisers, decided to declare war on France and he needed someone to organise the army. This was a huge, complex task and could easily end up being a disaster. As a result, very few people wanted the job. This was the ideal opportunity for Wolsey, who offered to take the role. He worked really hard and was ruthless with anyone who stood in his way. After careful management, he successfully delivered a well-equipped and well-supplied army to France in 1513. This allowed Henry to lead his army over the channel successfully and invade France. Despite advice from his father's counsellors who suggested peace because war was expensive and dangerous, Henry took Terroan and Tournai and won the small skirmish in the Battle of the Spurs. However, as a result of Henry's allies backing out of the agreement to attack France, the campaign fizzled out. Meanwhile, Catherine of Aragon and the Earl of Surrey won a decisive victory at the Battle of Flodden against the Scottish. Despite his limited success, the campaign at Flodden really pleased Henry, who now saw Wolsey as someone who could fill his wishes quickly and efficiently, for it had had it not been for Wolsey, it would have been unlikely that Henry would have had the small victories that he had in France and the larger victory of Flodden, which Wolsey had also helped organise. As a direct consequence of this success in his personality, Henry began to give Wolsey more power. Once Henry and France had decided to end the war and undertake negotiations, it was Wolsey who was put in charge of them using the skills he had learned earlier in his career. As a result, Wolsey encouraged and was responsible for the marriage between Henry VIII's sister Mary Tudor and the aging Louis XII of France. This took place in 1514 but didn't last long as Louis soon died. When he did die, she returned to England. Wolsey also negotiated a French pension which Henry VIII would receive yearly in return for him giving up his title to the Crown of France. Wolsey was also very lucky. Whilst Henry VIII had, seventh, sorry, had been a hard worker and done most of the running of the country himself, Henry VIII was very different. As a teenager, still, Henry preferred pleasure over work. Wolsey encouraged this and as a direct result he was able to carve out a role carrying out all the boring and the tedious work that Henry VIII wanted to avoid. Wolsey was also fortunate that Henry disliked many of the advisers he had inherited from his father. He thought that many of them were old and boring. They all wanted peace with other countries, whilst Henry VIII liked the idea of waging war. He couldn't get rid of them all right away, but he didn't listen to them, and he gradually arrested them or forced them to retire. This left a hole and allowed Wolsey the opportunity to put forward his ideas. Wolsey made sure that his ideas were very similar to those of the king and as a result the king liked Wolsey and started to promote him quickly. As mentioned his success was quickly rewarded. In 1514 he became the Bishop of Lincoln and then the Archbishop of York which was the second most important religious position in England after the Archbishop of Canterbury. In 1550 1515, the Pope made Thomas Wolsey Cardinal, which was the highest rank in the Catholic Church. There was nothing unusual in this. Many English archbishops were made cardinals previously. By 1515, Wolsey was also the most important minister and remained this for the first half of Henry VIII's reign. He was charming and gifted. He dominated the country's legal financial and administrative systems once he was made Lord Chancellor in 1515. As Lord Chancellor, 
He was the king's chief minister and main advisor on all things. For 15 years, Wolsey juggled the most demanding roles in England. He was the leading churchman in England, but he also had his secular roles. He managed parliament, he raised taxes, he led the diplomatic negotiations, he planned military campaigns, he drafted new laws and he carried out many other tasks. This meant that he did the hard work of government, allowing Henry to spend his time jousting and taking part in his other enjoyments. As a direct consequence of all of these positions and responsibilities, Wolsey became very rich and spent his money lavishly on buildings, jewels and silver plates to decorate his houses with tapestries and fine clothing. In fact, only the king had more money than Wolsey and many called Wolsey the Alter Rex or the Second King. This spending gave his rivals the opportunity to accuse him of extreme greed and of trying to rival the king's magnificence. However, it's important to remember that Wolsey was the king's leading advisor, an archbishop and a cardinal. In these roles, he was expected to live as magnificently as he could. He also needed a huge income to pay all the people who worked for him, including lawyers, administrators who did the government business for him, and all different kinds of servants who were needed to keep his household running. Many nobles, as a result, grew to hate Wolsey, disliking the fact that he was starting to live like a king himself. Given that Henry VIII had a massive ego, it was surprising that Henry VIII allowed this to happen. But for much of his time and power, from 1515 to 1529, Wolsey was so valuable to Henry that Henry was fine with it. The sorts of questions that you might get asked are... The main reason for Wolsey's rise to power was the fact that he was in the right place at the right time. How far do you agree with this assessment? This type of question would be worth 16 marks. For your introduction, you need to state how far it was down to him being in the right place at the right time, but then also state that it was other factors as well. In the introduction, it's worthwhile introducing the two other factors that you're going to be addressing within the main body of the essay. So in the first paragraph, you need to include information about Wolsey being in the right place at the right time. Make sure that you keep to the points evidence and explain. And if you can, try to do this a couple of times. Then you need to make sure that once you have done this, you need to say that it was also other factors as well. And it still didn't mean it was inevitable that he would rise to so much power. Make sure that you end the paragraph giving a judgment on how important you believe this factor to be. If you don't think being in the right place at the right time is the most important, you need to make sure that you include a paragraph about what you do think was the most important reason. Again, you need to make sure that you use precise evidence and explain precisely how it led to his right, rise. For example, you could choose his personality, his dedication and organisational ability, and cite the French campaign. Again, try to link to other factors, for example, how his personality helped him to network so that when he was in the right place at the right time, he had the skills that were required. Always make sure that you link back to the question. For the third paragraph, you repeat as above, making sure that you're ranking factors in order of importance giving precise evidence, explaining and linking to other factors. For example, you might mention Henry VIII's personality and his dislike of the council, which allowed Wolsey to rise to power in a way that he would never have been able to under the reign of Henry VII. Finally, please make sure that you include a conclusion. Bring it all together with a judgment on how far his rise to power was due to being in the right place at the right time. If not, what factor was the most important? Do they link together? And ultimately, how much was it a combination? This is Seal Barber, 1977. Thank you for watching.